Welcome to video five in the Recruit the Best Team webinar. On this webinar, you'll learn about interviewing skills to keep you from liking candidates for all the wrong reasons and to help you get to the truth about candidates' strengths and weaknesses. You like people and you feel that you'd enjoy working with them, so you hire them. And then several months down the road, production is low and the new team member is not meeting sales goals. Then the enjoyment of working with a new team member has faded and it's replaced with stressful conversations around areas of low productivity. Well, what went wrong? What caused you to like candidates and not see their weaknesses? How can you avoid getting tricked during the interview? Great interviewing skills not only allows us to discern the truth about candidates, but it also helps us to attract the best candidates and repel the weak candidates. Great interviewing skills begins with learning to keep our emotions under control during the interview. Now, emotion is critical in making good decisions. However, too much emotion clouds our logic, so we need that critical balance between logic and emotion. There are three things that cause you to like candidates for the wrong reasons. Well, the first thing is talking too much about ourselves in the career. When we talk too much about ourselves, we naturally like the other person who's listening. I saw this played out recently at a dinner party my wife and I attended, where we sat at a table with this very nice couple, and since my wife doesn't like to talk much and she hates it when I talk too much, I decided to spend the time getting to know this nice couple and I kept them talking about themselves by asking questions like, where are you from? What brought you to town? Well, how did you meet? Questions like these kept them talking about themselves for a good 20 minutes, and eventually the gentleman looked at us both, and he said, the two of you are one of the nicest couples we've ever met. Well, I was initially puzzled as to why he thought we were such a nice couple since he didn't know anything about us, but it finally occurred to me that he liked us because we allowed him to talk about himself for the last 20 minutes. The more you talk about how wonderful the career is, how wonderful your company is, and the more you sell the candidate on taking the job, the more you like the candidate. You're so excited about the great opportunity, and you're a great salesperson, so it's easy for you to get the candidate excited. You then interpret their excitement as their ability to do the job. But you like the candidate because you talked about yourself and the career, not because you've measured to see if they're the right fit for the job. So how do you balance evaluating the candidate and selling the career? Inform the candidate about the career without selling the career. Start with asking candidates this question. What do you want to know about us in this job? When they ask a question, before answering their question, ask this question. What else do you want to know? And keep asking what else until you have a list of all the things they want to know. This discovery exercise not only tells you all the things you need to explain about the career, it also tells you many other things like their real level of interest in the career, how much research they've already done, and exactly what you need to talk about. This discovery exercise will save you time and allow you to answer their questions and concerns without selling the candidate. You may be surprised at how much less information about the career you actually need to share. Sell the candidate on the selection process and how you're looking for the best of the best and only the best make it through. The right candidate will be challenged by the notion that only the best survive, where the weaker candidates are scared off by the challenge. That's a good thing because if they're insecure about making it through your process, they certainly can't handle the rejection while selling. Since people like others when they're talking about themselves, when you use the questions in the interview questionnaire in the field manual, you get top candidates telling you about all of their accomplishments. Now, the candidate begins to like you and wants to work for you. Since the best candidates have options, in their interviews with other companies, the other managers are selling them on the career and not making them work for the job. The best candidates lose respect for these managers who don't make them work to get the job. The second thing that causes us to like people for all the wrong reasons during the interview is rescuing the candidate. 
If you've ever said, let's just relax and get to know each other, I want this to be more of a conversational interview. Or when your candidate's struggling to come up with a good answer, you reword the question or give them some hints of what you're looking for. These are rescuing behaviors that cause you to like the person who you're rescuing. This liking people who are rescuing behavior can be seen in many Hollywood movies. They make billions of dollars on movies about people who fall in love after they've rescued each other. So how do we conduct the interview in a way that gets to the truth but keeps us from unnecessarily liking people for all the wrong reasons? It's important to keep our emotions in neutral when interviewing. Many of you are natural-born salespeople, so the tendency in the interview is to sell the career instead of select the candidate, which leads to the two above behaviors of talking about ourselves and rescuing the candidate. The best way to make a logical and less emotional hiring decision is to, number one, use questions tied to the specific traits you want to measure. We've made this easy. Simply use the questionnaires in the field manual. All of these questions are tied to the five dimensions of character, attitudes, motivations, personality, and sales skills. When using the questionnaires, be sure to read the questions as written. Don't paraphrase the question or give hints of what the question's measuring. Don't skip questions. Even though you think you know the answer to a question, ask it anyway. Many times you'll be surprised by the candidate's answers. Next, take off your sales hat and put on your recruiting hat. You do this by keeping your emotions in neutral during the interview. Don't use a stern, low-brow voice in order to project a tough interview image. And don't use the other extreme of this overly happy, relaxed tone either. Read the question with neutral emotions and expressions, record the answer, and move to the next question. You'll get the real person and can more easily recognize embellished and weak answers. Sometimes it's pretty, other times it's ugly, but you get the truth. Top candidates thrive in this type of interview and enjoy the challenge of having to impress you without getting a lot of feedback about the quality of their answers. Weak candidates who are trying to embellish their answers or who don't have good answers make it more obvious that they're not strong candidates. You may have seen how Harry Connick Jr. on American Idol does this as a contestant is auditioning. He makes the contestant give their best without his feedback during the performance. He watches the performance with neutral emotions. This also allows him to watch the performance with a discerning eye for the contestant's weaknesses and areas that need to be coached. When candidates leave the interview and are asked how the interview went, their answer should be, I'm not sure. I really got no reaction from the interviewer as to how I was doing. This reaction is an indication of a successful interview. You got the raw, non-embellished information you need to make a hiring decision when you keep your emotions hidden during the interview. This completes the information on the Recruit the Best system. You now have the information about human behavior so that you know what to look for during the selection process. You have a system with steps to follow and tools to help you get to the truth and evaluate each candidate. You have information about where to find the best candidates in the cracks and crevices of your community. Since you now know what it costs you when you like people for all the wrong reasons, you can now conduct an interview that will help you get to the truth about whether or not a candidate can sell or if a service person can pivot. Visualize yourself building a team of high-performing selling and servicing team members. Your business will grow and thrive as you use this knowledge, follow the steps, and improve your skills. Life will be easier, and you will have a team to be proud of. It's been my pleasure serving you, and I look forward to continuing to coach you as you build your team. Now go recruit the best.